Mental health trusts across London have failed to reveal whether they've used the controversial technique of face-down restraint, despite admitting they do have access to the figures. Most of the institutions here blame technical or human error for their failure to provide the information to a freedom of information request. Here's our special correspondent, Kurt Barley. The family of Shenny Lewis are still waiting to learn why he died as a result of restraint in 2010 in a mental health hospital. A survey by the mental health charity Mind has now discovered that the use of restraint is far more widespread than previously understood. Those who've suffered restraint in hospital describe it as a terrifying experience. In that psychosis, it's like they're trying to kill you and you're trying to fight for your life, as it were. So it's, it's a position that's, uh, and then they're saying, stop struggling, uh, stop, you know, and you're not, you're not able to stop because you're in that fear for your life. And so it goes on to the point where people I know have had their limbs broken. Across London, the survey by mine shows there were 3,244 incidents of physical restraint in 2011-12. Two of the eight mental health trusts reported 31 face-down restraints, six failed to respond. There were 38 reported physical injuries. Restraint is uh, at best dehumanising and humiliating and at worst it can be life-threatening. So every single mental health trust should be in a position to report very clearly on any incidents of restraint that happens on their wards or indeed on their watch. The government admits it's worried about the figures and wants NHS trusts to share best practice using physical restraint only as a last resort. I'm very interested in what Mind says about the idea of, com of, of just banning uh, face-down restraint. If that's possible, it should be done. Uh, what I'm conscious of is that there are sometimes extreme circumstances, perhaps someone who's trying to take their own life. The East London Trust has the highest incidence of use of restraint, 1,060 cases between 2011 and 2012. But like many of the other trusts across London, that paints an incomplete picture. We simply don't know how much damage this use of restraint is causing to patients. Kurt Barling, BBC London News.